Hello, my fellow investors, and welcome back to another fundamental analysis video. Guys, the quarter is actually about to begin very, very soon. At least the earnings for the quarter are about to start very, very soon. So we only have a few more days until we can cover a few more of your guys' recommendations. Now, we actually do have one not in the wheel, but we do have one that came in right after the wheel was done, and that was this one. So shout out to you. I think your name was like Post Shack or something like that. I don't have it right in front of me, but you asked for the company NUTX. So let's take a look at that company. I've never heard of it before, and usually companies like that I'm usually very interested in, um, you know, because it's variety, right? It's variety, and it, you, you never know, right? You never know what you actually may find. So. We're going to take a look at this company. We're going to take a look at what they do, the company profile, the fundamentals, uh, their earnings, and then it's kind of free cash flow to see if uh, this company is worth a buy or not at this point. So before we get started, make sure to like, subscribe, comment. It really does help with the algorithm on YouTube. As well as remember, make sure to follow us on XFL Investing. Of course, if you like, join us on the Discord. The link is in the description below. So terribly sorry that we have not been talking too much on the on the Discord, but Mike dealing with the hurricane and me dealing with my son, it's kind of just yeah but thank you guys so much and if you would like to get the videos as they come out that is the best place to get them so with that said let's get started with this analysis all righty so here we have the company nutex uh nutex health so this is actually a healthcare slash health insurance company very very interesting right off the bat right very very interesting right off the bat so let's just jump into the company profile. We got Nutex up operates as a physician-led healthcare service and operations company. It operates through three segments, hospitals, population health management, and real estate. The PHM segment establishes and operates independent physicians associations and offers a cloud-based platform for healthcare organizations to provide value based on base care and population health management. The real estate segment owns the and the, the real estate segment owns and owns and leases. Okay, that's a little bit weird of a sentence right there. Uh, leases land in hospital buildings. The hospital segment develops and operates a network of micro hospitals, specialty hospitals, and hospital outpatient departments, which offers 24 7 care. So, there you guys have it. It's actually a, a healthcare company mixed in with real estate. That's a little bit weird, right? That's a little bit weird. I wonder how, I wonder how, like, the filing of that kind of has to kind of like deals with it because real estate companies guys have a completely different type of taxation than normal companies so it's actually really really interesting as to how they're mixed in together at least that's just what i'm getting from the company profile so with that let's actually now move into of course their earnings because they did have earnings on august 8th and we can see here that we don't have anything for the eps normalized actual yeah nothing however the eps gap actual it was a beat by 14 cents, but it was still in the negative by 15 cents. And the revenue of $76.08 million. So that was a beat by $7.88 million. Now, the next one, this is a company, guys, that actually doesn't have a lot of um, enthusiasm to it, right? It's a fairly new company. And we can see that right here, right? I mean, we got 28 cents for the EPS normalized estimate. For the EPS gap estimate, negative 24 cents. And the revenue of $73.22 million. There has been no revisions. No one's looking at this company. So... That may present itself as a great buying opportunity because it's not in the news, right? Now, let's take a look at, of course, their actual earnings summary. And there really isn't much of anything here. We can just see everything that we just saw on uh, yeah, on the other tab. So with that, let's now jump into, of course, the spreadsheet. So we got the ticker for NUTX market cap of $98.98 .98 million. No PE, obviously, because they it's in the negative, right? It's, it's completely in the negative. And the current share price is uh, $19.14. And if we take a look at this graph, we can see that on the one year, they're down 31.4%. And year to date, they're down 27.63%. You guys can see that. Yeah, they were actually a penny stock um, on the 52-week range, $4.60. And on the 52-week high, 45 talk about volatility my goodness let's actually see this on the five year for a second because bro this graph looks i wonder what mike would say if you were to take a look at this graph because this is absolute insanity well first of all this definitely seems to be a a massive incorrect so, something happened here right there was definitely like a glitch something happened here there's no way that this thing was worth five thousand dollars more than five thousand dollars in the span of just like a blip so yeah then they came crashing down then they went all the way up to a 
1500 back in 2022 absolutely crazy falling back down to 700 and then coming back up to once again of like what i don't even know what that is uh a little bit like what 1500 i think that's insane and then they just crashed down and yeah this is i right then there I, me personally i would just not look any further this kind of graph looks absolutely insane i don't even know i i just don't know but i really would like to know Mike's interpretation of how this thing looks like. So uh, maybe something that I bring up to him in the near future. And we can see that obviously they do not pay out a dividend, which is not really surprising. However, take a look at this five-year average free cash flow, which yeah, we do have to use the five-year calculator guys because um they don't have 10 years of data. Unfortunately, they do not. But we can see here around $34 million. The problem is, is that um, the last year's one is negative $8.2 million that's concerning so now let's take a look at these overall graphs starting of course with the net income we can see that um five years ago this was 20.9 million dollars as of one year ago it is down to negative 45.8 million dollars this is a big problem right because you can see that from five to three increasing massive downturn two years ago but then it's gone up so this is where i'm just like i have no idea what's happening here obviously this downturn was probably due to uh interest rates i'm assuming but you guys can see that, yeah, this is, uh, it's going up, but it's still a massive downturn on the five year, 319%. So overall, I'm going to give this a 30%. When looking at now the free cash flow, we can see something very similar. We can see five years ago of $20.2 million, sorry, negative $20.2 million to one year ago of eight point, negative $8.2 million. That is an increase of 59% with an average of 33.92 million dollars however you guys can see that this is just yeah three years ago probably covid related if i'm not mistaken um if i had to guess or maybe that was four years ago but they maybe saw the majority of that increase uh three years ago right uh at least the consequences of covid being healthcare and we can see that afterwards just decreasing down to the negative again so I don't necessarily know where this is going. It is an increase, but I don't know where this is going. So 40%, I guess. Looking now into the revenue, it actually doesn't look too bad. It is still a decrease, though, a certain years here and there, but eh, we'll see. We got five years ago of $97.1 million, two one year ago of $247.6 million, increase of almost 155%. Nice consistent increase up until three years ago, dropped two years they definitely struggled two years ago right dropped two years ago but they are increasing it after that so i'm going to give them a 70 percent looking now into the assets minus the liabilities obviously once again they saw a dip two years ago and so far they have been recovering average total assets of 391.14 million dollars liabilities of 267.04 million dollars and a difference of 124.1 million dollars in the positive i'm going to give this guys a 50 percent don't really know where this is going once again. Into now the cash flow minus liabilities. Obviously, the cash flow as of the last year has been going down. Even two years ago has been going down as well, which we see that right here perfectly. Uh, however, we can see that um, they were increasing it from five, four to three years ago. Again, it's just something happened two years ago that just completely crushed the company. All in all, though, as of one year ago, it is negative $327 million. And the average being negative $190.72 million dollars. I'm going to give this a 5%. I guess, okay. I'm going to give this guy a, uh, oof, hang on a minute. No, no, no. I'm going to give this like a 30% just because I, it's just, I don't know. I just don't know. It's very, very difficult to determine what's going to happen even now, even this year. Into now the shares outstanding. Not really surprising. It's a new company. In fact, we don't even have the five-year goal value. I just made it the same. It's a four-year goal value. Just for that way, the numbers actually make sense. So we can see 4 million shares five years ago. Technically four years ago, but five years ago. To now 5 million shares. So they are increasing shares, but it's common to see that in companies this new. It's still an increase of 25% on five-year and 11.11% on the previous year to the current year. Again, 50%, not really sure where this is going. And lastly, Cash and Coins, they currently hold $40.8 million with an average of $27.78 million. As an overall grade, 46%. Yeah, I would say it's a little bit less than 50%. I don't know where it's going. I really just do not know where it's going overall. So now taking a look at the discounted free cash flow. Obviously, because this is the five-year one, I'm going to use the recovery rate of return as flat across the board 10% to at least match the S&P 500. So... 
we got the protected share buyback guys of um well we have seen around 25 percent issuing most likely this will continue at roughly the same pace so let's choose negative 30 for the lowest assumption let's go with negative 28 for the median assumption and then let's go up by two again at around negative 26 percent the negative just means that they're issuing and now for the revenue growth okay we can actually take a look at this now. We can actually take a look at this now, which according to Seeking Alpha, the revenue forward is estimated at 16.68%. I say let's go something along those lines. I say going at around, um, let's say going around like 12, right? Um, yeah, 12, 15, and then let's go up by three again, 18%. I think that's fair. We can see guys, $6.58 to $8.27. I'm not going to look at the adjusting for debt because uh, it's in massively in the negative. So you really can't do anything much there. But if you guys remember, the overall 52-week uh, low was around $4, right? It was around $4. And right now, the current price is $19.54. So I don't know. To me, this company, I, 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 I can't really tell where to put it from a fundamental perspective. So I personally would just ignore it. But again, guys, not financial advice. Every investment is the present value of all future cash flow. And I'm pretty certain that Mike would say roughly the same thing that doesn't really understand, especially with that massive spike going up to 5,000. That's absolutely crazy. At least for me, though, the numbers don't make sense. The graphs don't make sense. I I, I don't know. Right? I just do not know. Not telling anybody what to do. Obviously, not financial advice. Again, every investment is the present value of all future cash flow. For me alone, though, I would have just stopped at the... Um, yeah, I would have just stopped at the... Uh, at the at the fundamentals, honestly, I would have just been like, yeah, no, no, I see the free cash flow done. I would have just stopped. So this is my personal opinion. And uh, I do not like this company at all. So all in all, hopefully this helped. It's an interesting company. I just, A, don't know too much about it. B, the fundamentals aren't good. And I mean, the graph just doesn't even look good at all. And lastly, this kind of free cash flow just doesn't make any sense. So this is just one that I would just pass on, right? Tell me what you guys think. Do you know more about it? What do you know that I didn't cover? Which probably is a lot because I'm not going to do a full-blown research into every single company I do. But tell me what you guys know. Tell me if you guys are interested in this company and why. Leave it down in the comment section below. So with that said, make sure to like, subscribe, comment. It really does help with the algorithm on YouTube as well. So make sure to follow us on XFL Investing. And of course, if you'd like to join us on the Discord, link is in the description below. So with that said, peace out and we'll see you all next time.